You've got this entire basket of sweets. Who's eating all of these? Let's address the elephant in the room, legato. Some say that legato patches are a completely essential part of the libraries they use, and others say that they don't need them at all. Now in this episode, I want to get to the bottom of what legato is, whether we really need it or not, but most importantly, why our program legato in so many cases doesn't sound very good. A new library. Zillions of samples and patches at your disposal. And where do you start? You play a legato patch and you get carried away by the silky sweetness of the way the notes connect up. Or the smooth slides that trick our ears into thinking there's a bit of real musicianship and emotion. I have to admit, I'm guilty of this too. It's just way too easy to connect all of the notes up and feel like every note has to have a legato transition in order to feel realistic or to sound impressive. And there's even more than one option available. Alex, you ready? Well. We can choose between slurred and expressive, retongued or portamento or bow change legato. And in the end, there are so many different terms for so many legatos that I've forgotten why my musical line was even meant to be legato in the first place. Maybe you can see where this is going. Too many patches playing legato and we can't quite put our fingers on it, but everything is starting to sound sickly sweet. Too many notes connected up, on and on, and where the patch did sound great, now our musical phrase is starting to feel not quite right. It's like this basket here. This basket is filled with all kinds of sweet things. And I look into it, and everything looks great. So, I pick something up, I open it up, I eat it, it tastes great, and I think, maybe I'll have another. And so I do. And another, and maybe a few more, and it's all going great until I realise I'm not feeling quite right anymore. And it's the same with our legato samples. Too many patches playing legato, and we can't quite put our fingers on it, but it all ends up being sickly sweet. Too many notes connected up, on and on, and then not so suddenly, our music isn't feeling quite right either. So in this episode, I want to unravel what legato really is, and to figure out why the legato patches that we use, that have so much time and effort put into them, end up sounding unrealistic. And to do that, I think it's best that I call in an expert. Now I'm joined by Clara, who's an amazing cellist. And in this episode, we're going to talk about all things legato. So, Clara, tell me, what is legato? Well, legato means connecting notes. And on a string instrument, I do that by playing two or more notes on the same bow, like this, for example. I mean, are there different types of legato? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, it's interesting because when in the world of samples, we often, in order to get a, a realistic kind of recreation of how you would play something, we have different types of legato. Oh, yeah, we, we capture the different styles of moving around an instrument. Mm -hmm. The first one we normally have is something called a fingered legato. What is that exactly? <laughs> uh, um, I guess... Um, it's just a normal putting your finger down while the bow is moving, legato. So basically what I just did? Yeah, basically what you just okay. did. Like the, the, the standard legato, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we also have other types of playing like um, sliding, you know, like a, not a full portamento, but just a legato where there's a slide between two notes. Ah, okay. But I could also do that without legato, I think. Okay, what like does, what's that like? So you're ch you just change the bow and then as you change, you slide. Like if you, for example, just played a phrase where there was a lot of notes, I'm sure you would slide between some of them, right? And it would feel natural. Yeah. I mean, very often we try to avoid that, but sometimes it's also... But what, what about good. sort of expressive playing? It, there's always going to be a bit of portamento or something, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we've captured stuff like that in samples, but maybe... We don't ever want to go to that extreme. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, I was exaggerating yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah. I could also hide it. <laughs> so uh, I guess we rebuild this with different types of articulation. And uh, I, I mean, one of the problems we have where, with samples is that we often connect all the notes together, right? 
Uh, and this is why we kind of get drawn to a legato sound, but in the end it gets a bit sort of sickly because it, it doesn't ever change. It's like you've got an infinitely long bow and every note is connected to the next well, note. I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of don't wish you had one because it's nice. You know, it's part of the, the writing for string instruments that you factor this in. But mm -hmm. with a computer, you, you don't have any kind of context for that. You just, it sounds nice, so you connect the notes up. <laughs> but I guess what um, would be nice to learn today is how we improve our programming by learning how many notes we can get into one bow. Well, that's very difficult to answer, <laughs> like in general. So yeah, it really depends on the tempo and dynamics and lots of things. Okay, so it, let's say we pick a, a regular tempo, like 120 BPM. Mm -hmm. And we say we just have quarter notes. Mm -hmm. uh, how many do we get under one bow? Let's try. Yeah. Maybe four. Yeah, four under one bow at mezzo something. forte, mezzo yeah. something, yeah. <laughs> um, if you're quieter, can you get more? Or? Yes. Okay. So eight. comfortably eight, yeah. yeah. And then presumably if we go up and we're forte or fortissimo, well, less. But I could still... Kind of also depends on the character you want. Yeah, so you could get four, but maybe if it's meant to be a faster passage or if it is genuinely fortissimo, then mm -hmm. it's maybe two or three if you're in three or something. Yeah. Okay. So if you write a very long slur, which is kind of unrealistic for me to play, I will just, yeah, figure out a way how to, how to do it. So you don't have to worry. I know what I can do and I know how to oh, okay. kind of make it work and how, when and how to change. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm saved basically, even if I don't know how to write, then you'll just fix it. But if we're in a section, like in orchestra, then it's actually possible to yeah, kind of fake a very long slur right. by doing divisi bowings, kind of. So everyone changes in a different spot. And then you get the impression of a very long slur, a okay. very long legato. So you could have that sort of infinitely long bow in the orchestra. Yeah, yeah it, it okay. works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this is really great. I mean, I'm learning loads about all of this. And I'm wondering if it's a good idea if we can take some of the real world info here and then you can help me put it into programming world so we can program something up together. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, great. Okay, so I've got a piece of music here and in the opening I've written a solo cello line and the melody for that is basically this. But I, I haven't finished it, but I just thought it's probably best that we just play through what I've got so far and then you can have a listen and then we'll talk about some of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. You can probably hear that the end is sort of begging for a melody, right? <laughs> but I figured we should start at the beginning with this uh, solo cello mm -hmm. passage, because mm -hmm. at the moment I've just got everything, as we were talking about earlier, all the notes are just overlapping so that they trigger a, a fingered legato. To me it sounds like a potter, actually. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play it in solo for you and then you can mm -hmm. 
have a listen, see what you think. Mm-hmm. How do you think we can improve it, really? I mean, is there, are there points maybe where we can make it rebo, so at least it sounds more natural? Yeah, I mean, we realistic? have to. We can't play this whole melody in one bow, obviously. Okay, <laughs> well, well, this is good. So if we look at it sort of bar by bar, where would you naturally change bow first time around? Hmm. But probably you want... Um, these right connected right oh, yeah. yeah i think the certainly these two should probably be bowed together mm, yeah they also feel the same something like the first four here could be connected and then we could have that one would you connect those three i think it's too long especially on a on an up bow yeah no, it feels really unnatural. <laughs> okay, so would it be three bows? I mean, actually, I would have to try, you know? <laughs> yeah. Somebody has to fetch the cello quickly. <laughs> I mean, maybe we, we could at least try it and then see if it improves in realism. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know if it's going to improve in realism. But we can disconnect the things a bit and see if this actually works. Improvement, or I, th- yeah. I mean, it does sound quite natural still. Yeah, I mean, I think it's good to have this on an up bow and another down bow on the high note. I think that's kind of natural because yeah. also for the phrase, right? Okay. I'm just not sure if I will have enough bow for this whole long thing, like the third bow kind of. Th- this have. one. What if you just, if it was quieter, and we, like we were saying earlier, if you diminuendo, then you get a bit of more of bow length? It could work. It could work. I mean, I would really have to try. I guess for the purposes of MIDI, we can um, we just say that that's, that's okay, possible. Cool. That, yeah. that bar eight there is doable. <laughs> um, so I think the obvious one is we disconnect this a bit, but this on the B. And then our next phrase is similar, but... Um, I'm wondering if I could do a retake here yeah, and start again. Like, I definitely want to finish on a down bow. So the this, last the last note is its own bow, so actually not connected up to the previous one. I would. I would play it on a new bow. The I think. the la the last note. Okay. I so, could even do a portamento for you. <laughs> Okay, that's doable. <laughs> but on a new bow, for sure. On a new bow, right. Yeah. Well, we could put that in, actually. I mean, we could say, um, if, but, if I pull this up, this is going to portamento. I mean, for the purposes of making that happen, they have to connect up. But at least it might be something that sounds more natural. I mean, the portamento would probably happen automatically. Like, you don't have to like write it in my music. No, no, I don't think it would. It's just a, yeah. it's like a case of getting the samples to go back into a realistic yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, way of, of playing. <laughs> the last note is an A, isn't it? No. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. It is an A, yeah. 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 It's very, very likely that uh, <laughs> I would do a slide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's say we can, we keep these two connected, for, but they would be separate bows. Yes. Would, that means this is a separate bow to that, right? No, not necessarily. Wait. I would probably play. Okay. So this is in two bows, this bit, that's in one bow, this... I think. I would have to try again, but... No, I think this is all valid. So if I disconnect those, I don't know if that's going to sound properly. We'll see. It's a little bit messy there, but I can probably (laughs) improve that a little bit. I have another idea. Play the second phrase, like we add one more bow change. 
Yeah, I'm with you. So this one. Yeah, we separate these two. We don't connect up. So we go. Yeah. I think, I think, I think that sounds good. Yeah, I think that's the best. Well, we've just got this end section left to deal with. And I mean, look at it. It's crying out for a cello melody, isn't it? Yeah, always. <laughs> I was thinking we could program something up, but why would we do that when we have a cello and a cellist here? Okay, so you've got some headphones, there's click and there's track in the headphones, the mic's on, you have a part, all ready to go? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Clara, thank you so much for coming here today and just showing me that a real musician is always going to be better than some programming. And for sharing all your insights as well into Legato. Well, thank you. It's also been a great new experience for me. Well, I hope that we've put some of the issues around Legato to rest here today. But let us know in the comments if you have any other ways of programming ultra-realistic Legato, or if this video has been helpful for you programming Legato for strings.